Hi, Pflugerville Public Library patrons and fans of kids sewing crafts. This is Miss Jan from the Pflugerville Quilt Guild, and I'm here with the second of one of our December crafts to show you today. Uh, this one is a fun one that makes me laugh. We are making fun food. We are making a little felt wedge of watermelon. Now this one truly is little. So I thought, mm, you know, if I was going to have watermelon, I would want more than this. So the one we're making is bigger, bigger, better, brighter. And look at this with the red, white, and green. And if you can't enjoy watermelon during the summer, which this was a craft for the summer, but we're going to use it now for the holiday season. It's all the right colors, red, white, green, and it's kind of shaped like a Christmas tree. Uh, I wanted to let you know that it is simple felt craft. You don't have to worry about raw edges fraying. Felt is wonderful for being sewn with no uh, raveling or anything like that. And to make this easy on you, we have supplied you with the wedge already pinned. This one's pinned with straight pins, but your, yours will be pinned with uh, safety pins. These are straight pins. Uh, and I want you to know that I did not use any kind of marker because with this craft, you are going to let your stitches show. See how it's okay to let your stitches show on this one because it blends right in. And I want you to know you do not have to run out and buy the perfect color thread. If you have something neutral like gray or just white or black, actually black thread with nice neat stitches gives it a really lovely homemade touch. And it, there's nothing sweeter than something that's handcrafted. Now, we're using these at Christmas time because wouldn't it be hilarious to have a wedge of watermelon hanging in your Christmas tree? It's sort of a joke. Also, if you have a housekeeping center or your sisters or brothers want pots and pans for Christmas, you'll be able to make them some play food. Also, because this is soft like Nerf, uh, uh, it's good for uh, playing a game. You could play catch the watermelon or you could play watermelon in the bucket and make a tossing game. Uh, just have fun with it. It's, uh, it's light, it bounces, it won't hurt anybody even if it does have a, some points. And uh, you know, you could do a joke like Chinese throwing star watermelon. <laughs> And uh, because it's flannel, you don't need to worry about fraying. You can sew right on the top. And for once, we're not going to be using straight stitches. We're going to be using the overcast stitch, which we have used before. All right, now I'm going to uh, get out the instructions and go through it with you now. And I'll set up. Here we are. This is the instructions for the watermelon, watermelon wedge from felt. It only has four steps. I've written, written them, well, that in the back, is it? There you go. I've written them out with a diagram, and on it I have shown you the, the overcast stitch, or what they call the whip stitch. And I, I mention it on here, I say using an overcast stitch. Um, also in some of the books that you can check with, out with the library, they call it the whip stitch. There's lots of different ways of, of doing this. Anyway, here is the basic uh, thing that comes in the kit. It's the, a wedge that, uh, it's sort of a semicircle that's been folded into a wedge and anchored. Uh, remember, I'm not going to um, mark it and we've given you stuffing. There's a pile of stuffing, and if you do it just right and get it in your corners and smooth it out, it'll be just the right amount. Not too dense to make it too hard to throw, and not too uh, loose that it doesn't puff out. So just right. All right, so here you go. 
I'm gonna show you right now. Here we, now once again, I have pinned mine with straight pins. Yours have been pinned with safety pins for your safety. Now, I'm going to start with the red pointing at me and I am going to use matching thread. A spool of matching thread, one this size, is usually about three three dollars or so um, you don't need one that large and if you know someone who has uh, a collection of threads just ask them can you can you let me pull some red thread off your spool and uh, just wind it around something and you can wind it around a pencil and bring it home and use it um, we we uh, Flukerville quilt guild ladies borrow from each other all the time now, starting right here with my red thread, which does have a knot tied on the end, I want that knot to disappear, so I'm going to stick it on the inside of this little wedge, because once this side is sewn, we will stuff from the bottom. And this, we can use our, let me start. Well, hello there. We're gonna use our overcast stitch. Get started, there you go, there. The overcast stitch, remember, always starts from the same place, usually behind you and the needle is coming to you. And see how that is, I'm gonna try to make sure I'm in the right place with some good light. Unfortunately, this camera is in my light. You stay close to the edge, and each each um, stitch is close to each other. I don't know if you can see how close that is. The more evenly you space them out, the better it looks. And you can tighten it up a little bit, often stop and check. Do they look even? Did they catch both sides? And. If they don't look like they're catching, then move inward a little bit more. There we go. You don't have to pull too tight, but remember you are going to be stuffing this. So you do want it tight, you just don't want it to pucker up. There we go. There we go. Always go to the back, pull to the front. There, see I'm whipping my thread around and coming up from the back. There we go, whip it around, or overcast it. You're throwing it over, that's what overcast means. You're throwing the thread over and coming up from the back again. Throw it over. And it's okay for these to show. When you, when you have matching thread, the nice little even stitches are part of your decoration, and they're, they're kind of attractive. I mean, it, it just says this is something homemade, and you can make this for uh, siblings or cousins or maybe a, a, a friend in the neighborhood who loves to play house and needs some play food. Maybe you have a friend that is a little more rambunctious and wants to uh, throw things around but you know in the house we need to be respectful of other people's things and something soft like this wouldn't hurt anything. And you could catch it without hurting. Of course, I don't know, a dog or a cat might get the idea that this is a perfect toy for them, unless that's the whole point of it, is you wanna make your dog or cat something. Okay, now we're gonna test. I'm, I'm gonna remove those pins, and I'm gonna put my finger in here and, and give a little push. Excellent! See how they're holding together? That's gonna look good. Okay. I am going to finish this. Now, if you really care about matching, you would stop right here with the red, maybe do an inch of white, and then finish with green. And when that is done, you will open it, open it like a can, a, a ice cream cone and stuff it. All right, I'll be back with the finishing touches. Now, I have finished whip stitching or overcast stitching the side of the watermelon wedge. I used red to here, white here, and green here. 
but I could have used black the whole way and had a nice even little homemade looking stitch all the same. Now I didn't, I have a lot of thread left over so I didn't need to cut it, but this is where you're going to stuff your watermelon. Now in your kit, you have a baggie of fiber fill and you're going to take the fiber fill and carefully stuff. First you want to stuff the point. And see how I got that pretty good, but I'll tell you what, if I have a pencil handy like this and it's not going to make any marks on the inside, I don't think. Well, let's use the eraser end. And I'm going to poke gently, not to push through any of my threads or anything, but I'm going to poke till I get some stuffing up there in the point. There you go. I can feel it. And now, now that the point is stuffed well, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my stuffing in and just arrange it the best I can. Now see how I'm spreading it out like this with my fingers. And you want to clear just a little bit of this because the, the seam right here is going to come together and this is going to be the bottom of your watermelon. There. And after, after you finish, you can still push and prod and shape a little bit more. We're doing it right now is the best time to do it. There. Now, I left my green thread attached because I had so much left over. But And this is where I'm going to press down. And because I have straight pins, I'm going to leave it flat on the table and use straight pins to hold it together. Now, if you have safety pins, you may have to pick it up and hold your two sides together and put the safety pin that way. Here we go. Yeah. There. There we go. Whoops. I may want to catch this part a little bit better with another pin. There. Now I used a lot of pins. I hope you don't need to use that many. And if you take your time, when it's, when it's uh, all it just needs to do is to hold together long enough for you to start your whip stitch or overcast stitch on the bottom row here. There we go. You don't want to pucker it up, but you do want it tight enough that it's going to hold the edges together. Now, here we go. Alright. Now, Okay, you can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to work my way on around and be back with the finished product. Okay, here we are, watermelon wedge all finished. Here's the fun part. This part, you can make the seeds, and there are lots of different ways to do that. I happen to have some uh, t-shirt paint, and it happened to be dark. It was black. And I use t-shirt paint to make little um, seeds on mine. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. But another thing that you can do is you can take some black thread and you can just sew stitches. I didn't start off with my thread threaded, but we'll do it real quickly. Here we go. Threading. Now, if you have someone in your family who likes to embroider and they have really thick thread, this would be an opportunity for you to do a little embroidery. Now, oh, look what I did. Here we go. Well, I was trying not to knot. There we go. There. Here we go. Now, sometimes in watermelons, the seeds aren't um, round. The way you cut the watermelon, you just see the sides of the seeds. So you could do this. This is using thread to draw. There you go. That would be one seed. 
And then I could move over by sticking my needle in and moving over and doing my next seed. There we go. Maybe three little stitches like this will show a seed. There. There's another one. And then we can move over and do another one. See, in order to move over, you just go underneath the fabric and it brings you up a stitch. There you go. I think three stitches on each one. Now, if all you have is a Sharpie, those work great too. You can do little Sharpie teardrop shapes or little Sharpie circles. Um, but this is embroidery and it's cute too. And uh, when you get finished, you, so you do your little loop to tie off. Here we go. Here's the little loop to tie off. There. We make it go, hello. Make it go back through. And then uh, you want to move the thread out of the way so it disappears there and you can cut it right there. And see, no thread is showing. This is, these are little embroidered stitches. These are fabric painted stitches and a Sharpie, a permanent marker. Those work great too. Or if you had sequins that you uh, wanted to sew on or glue on, you could try those too. But remember, if you're going to play games with this and toss it around, something like sequins that are glued on would fall off. Anyway, have fun playing with your watermelon wedge. It's pretty durable, but I'd watch those pets. This is Miss Jan thanking you for being part of our December craft.